Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a geometry project to share with you today. We are using our live education curriculum for grade 6 and we are going to do this project today which is the 12 division of a circle. So for this project you're going to need some watercolor paper. I am using the Fabriano brand watercolor paper that's 90 pound. It is 14 inches by 11 inches. We're also going to need a compass for this project and I'm going to set my compass at a diameter of about two and a half inches. Next I want to find the center of my page. I'm just using my ruler to figure that out. That way we can start our single circle right at the center and that way we can get the largest circle possible by working right in the middle. I'm going to erase those extra lines and double check the diameter of my circle and then I'm going to move my paper around rather than moving my compass around. That way I can ensure that my compass stays at the same diameter. Now I've put my compass on the outside of that initial circle in order to get the six divisions of a circle. And wherever that circle intersects the initial circle is where I'm going to inscribe another circle. So this is what it looks like when we have the six divisions of a circle. Now we need to work on the 12 divisions. And in order to do this, we are going to do two triangles on the inside of that using those six points as a guide. So I'm going to go ahead and do that initial triangle and then I'm going to do the next one. And so basically if you connected all those dots you get a hexagon. Now I'm just going to use my ruler and I'm going to go right in between those two points. And that's right where those two lines intersect. And now we have another six points where we can draw those circles out. And that's how we get a total of 12 divisions for the circle. I find that explaining the process is a little bit more complicated than just doing it. So if I've confused you, don't worry, give it a try. It's a lot easier than it looks. All right, so now it's time to erase those extra lines. I'm erasing all of those straight lines for those two triangles. And then I'm just going to come back in and redraw those segments. And now it's time to add our resist medium. This is called Fine Line Resist Pen. I picked it up from a local craft store. We're going to use this to add resist so that when we add our watercolors, our watercolors stay in each of those segments. So I'm going to start by going from the center and radiating out in these different segments. It's a little bit easier to do one section at a time rather than doing an entire arc of the circle. Now at this point you can choose which lines to add resist to and if you add resist to all of the lines this is what you'll get and this was my color inspiration for this project. Now I am using these Stockmar watercolor paints and they are available at achildsdream.com. I'm also using a variety of brushes both with synthetic and all natural fibers. That little water jar container is also from a child's dream. I'm going to fill each of these containers with 20 mils of water and I'm going to end up mixing 12 different colors. All right, so I have all of my colors ready to go and I am going to do the deepest colors right in the center. Now because I mixed my paints a day prior to doing this project, some of the pigments settled to the bottom and that's why I was able to get that dark color right in the center. I just showed you a mistake and how to mend it. I am just using just water on a paintbrush in order to take out that little bit of paint that ended up in the wrong section. And once that was clear, I was able to move on to filling in the second layer of color, which is a mix of the two adjacent colors. It's a little bit hard to see and it's probably not necessary, but I think it looks really nice in the end. I'm just going to erase some of those extra lines. You could leave them in and fill in that last section, but I decided to make it look more like a flower. Now for this next section, I am doing the same color as the initial smallest part of the flower but I am trying to do it a little bit lighter. It doesn't actually look lighter but that was my intention. Now for the very outside section again it's going to be the same color but I am watering it down quite a bit so that you can see that it's similar to the color that it's touching as it goes towards the center of this flower but it's just a lot lighter. 
And then for this last section, I am just mixing again the two adjacent colors. And again, you can't see so much that the color is different. So you can either choose to mix the colors or make them a little bit lighter or darker, or you could leave them white. I really like the way that the flower stands out against some white sections. All right, so now I just wanna let it dry before I rub out the resist medium. But I took a closer look at the project and I noticed that there were some areas that were left white. And I wanna fill those in before I remove the resist medium. But rather than using the same paint that I used earlier, I am just going to wet my paintbrush and just reactivate the paint that's already in those sections and just kind of fill in any little white spot that I saw. Okay, so now I've waited till it's dry and you wanna make sure that your whole project is completely dry before you remove the resist medium, which is really easy to remove. It's just a gummy residue that you rub off with your hands. It leaves nothing on your paper. It's a really fantastic product. I like it a lot. Now you can really see how that white is really popping against all those beautiful colors. I really like that finishing detail. I'm just going to use my eraser and try to erase any pencil marks. You wanna be really careful because any of your paint that isn't dry, it will smudge if you try to erase it. And I had to be really careful about erasing all the way in the center. All right, so now it's my son's turn to do this project. He is 11 years old. I did help him to put the resist medium on, but he did the entire project on his own. I really like his color choices. He made the his entire project a little bit paler than my example, and I really like the way it turned out. So if you want to see some of the other projects we have done for our geometry unit or any of the projects we're doing for our ancient Greece unit, you can tap on the screen right now. And don't forget that if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.